What problem was invented just to sell a product? Not having stark white teeth, which is unnatural. In a related note, I just saw an ad for a product to make your eyeballs whiter. So now we have that to worry about. I mean, people bleach their buttholes, so eyeballs isn't shocking. Contouring. Cosmetic companies have 13 year olds thinking their bone structure is wrong and are selling billions of dollars of bronzers so women can fix their face. I've been a makeup artist for over a decade. A little shading was always a thing but now it's a completely different thing. Facetune feeds into this too. It's so easy to alter an image of yourself or see altered images on sites like Instagram. Which quickly leads to dysphoria and wanting to fix yourself with cosmetics or surgery. Makeup is such a fun form of expression but it's more profitable if companies make you think you need it to look like yourself. So this has been such a mainstream thing for so long I don't how many people will relate. Today, we are bombarded with teeth whitening ads. This never existed before. Not the products. It was available in drug stores. But a campaign designed by Colgate was launched against unsightly yellow teeth. Someone tell me that they do a tissue test, their latest ploy to get people to hold bleached paper products to their natural teeth and deem their, likely, pristine teeth unsuitable. Dentists are loving this trend though, a whole new possibility of revenue for them. Whitening services and also enamel and cap services when people bleach their freaking teeth too much. Beware. There is a natural color grade dependent upon the person for tooth color. Some are naturally darker some lighter. Over bleaching can and will lead to enamel erosion. Bottled water. About 25 years ago or so, soft drink companies were worried the reputation of their products were as the most unhealthy thing you could drink. And there was a lot of health advice to just drink plain water. Sure, the soft drinks aren't the best thing to drink, but if people cut back on drinking them in favor of water, they'd lose money, as people drank straight from the tap. So, instead, the soft drink industry decided to bottle water and sell it, as if it were substantially better than most tap water. The grandest irony is that if you read the fine print, the vast majority of bottled water is normal municipal water, as in the exact same tap water as anyone can drink in the city where it is bottled. So, we now have a billion dollar bottled water industry that virtually didn't exist 30 years ago, and thus created an even bigger plastic waste problem in the process. The whole toxins in your body where you would need a detox course for. No you don't need detox things at all your body can easily deal with most of what you eat and if you got ill well you might want to look at what you eat, how much you wash your hands or if anyone near you is sick. And if you do have high accumulation of heavy metals in you, a detox bath or face scrub isn't going to magically pull them out through your skin. Vaginal odor. A healthy vagina does have a scent and spoiler alert. It doesn't smell like flowers. This is why douching was so popular in the 80s and 90s since apparently any odor equals nasty. However, if you are put off by or concerned about your vagina's odor please see a gino instead of putting chemicals in your snatch. Also that stupid dry panties trend from last year. Ladies you don't have to be turned on to have some natural wetness. It is normal for you to have wet spots in your panties or to have small amounts of normal discharge. Not overly smelly or thick. In fact if your panties are consistently bone dry that might indicate there's a problem. <laughs> Needing to have a very expensive, diamond encrusted, piece of jewelry for a wedding ring. The concept of 3 month salary rings was invented to make people spend more money at jewelers. The campaign of a diamond is forever made the fad more popular. The concept of 3 month salary rings. Even reading that is absolutely insane to me. It blows my mind that there are schmucks out there blowing 3 months of their income on a freaking ring. YouTube not letting you continue playing a video when you close out the app. Suppose on a galaxy you can have a tiny screen and do otherwise but still. SMH. Buy premium. Or freak yourself. The 1 year lifespan of light bulbs. Filaments used to be incredibly long lasting. Same with nylon stockings getting holes. Originally nylon was strong enough that you could pull cars with it. Planned obsolescence is a thing. The Crest Pro white strips have commercials where they tell potential customers to take the napkin test to see if they need to use a whitening strip. Your teeth will never be as white as a napkin naturally. Just from drinking tap water water or brushing your teeth you are yellowing them due to the fluoride. But that isn't a bad thing. They're much stronger because of the fluoride. 
Honestly I hate when companies breed insecurities in people just to sell more products. I constantly see it in commercials and it's freaking sickening. Definitely vaccines. Andrew Wakefield decided to fake a study that vaccines caused autism, so he could sell his own special vaccines, if I remember correctly. God dang I wish I could see the upvote downvote history of this comment because I just know it has to have been a roller coaster due to the potential for misunderstandings. Most luckily fail rather quick. A recent example, banks around here tried to introduce the concept of what they call a multimate. It's basically a ATM that exclusively runs the online banking platform of a bank. Now, that would be great for areas with limited bandwidth or only limited data plans. But we're talking about Swiss metropolitan areas. Their logic is for people who want to do e-banking but in a safe environment because nothing is as safe as a public space for login into your e-banking. The reaction of most people is, predictably, you mean I can have all the disadvantages of having to physically go to the bank with all the disadvantages of online banking? Sign me up the only people who are excited by this idea are the CEOs and they are slowly but surely flocking to it. Which shows the problem of digital migrants being the decision makers in industries that transform to be digital industries. Oh, you're worried that people using food stamps may be drug users? Well we passed a law to test these people and conveniently my wife owns a lab test company. Yep, of all the people that receive money from the gov, you know, contractors, politicians, research grants, etc. We should only drug test one recipient of govt funds, the poorest, because dealing with an illness like drug addiction is actually way different than other life struggles. You want people to take away support. Yes. Not necessarily problems but, Christmas is actually not a very important holiday for Christianity, at least not as important as we make it out to be. Early Christians didn't even celebrate it and it's adopted from a Roman festival. However, it's so commercialized that it is what makes or breaks the bank for a lot of retailers. Also, FDR moved Thanksgiving forward so shoppers could have more time for Christmas. News about ghee, clarified butter, being bad for health was spread just so that refined oils could be sold for cooking which is actually bad for health. I'm sad that ghee has gone up in price so much in the last few years. I used to be able to get it in the UK for £3.50 and used it regularly but it's gone up to £6 for the same tin. Can't bring myself to get it anymore. Apple removed all the ports on the MacBook except for the USB-C and headphone jack to sell dongles. Then removed the headphone jack from the iPhone and kept the lighting port instead of using USB-C to sell AirPods. Triflin. Standardized testing. I have zero understanding how standardized tests on textbook racketeering. Your grades used to be enough, but not anymore. Now you need 4 years of good grades and you need to have a really good day on sat gray day. If you have one bad day, congratulations those 4 years of work mean nothing anymore. Also, they cost an arm and a leg to take, and it costs extra to send scores to schools. Don't want to pay $200 plus to take the exam and an additional $25 school? Then you can't go to college graduate school. They invented a problem that didn't exist, and for a huge amount of money they can help you solve it. I know you are talking about SATs, but the problem exists on lower levels too. If a school is judge rewarded based on graduation rates, then just lower standards and let everyone graduate. All of a sudden, a diploma is a useless way to judge whether a student has succeeded, and if the school is doing its job to educate our students. A crap ton of skincare issues you see in magazines. Anti-aging creams, antioxidant serums, etc. are bogus pseudoscientific terms to get a lot of women to shell out money. You can't reverse the aging process of your skin. However, you can moisturize and use sunscreen to maintain good skin care. Antioxidants do nothing on your skin. Any antioxidant components in a serum is essentially inert for skin health. TLDR. Skincare problems you commonly see in magazines are invented to sell a ton of beefed up versions of lotion you can get for cheap at drug stores. Listerine invented the concept of halitosis or bad breath in order to sell mouthwash, which was originally a failed household cleaning product. Once they gave bad breath a medical sounding name and advertised it as a problem, people started caring about it. Some people's breath is so rank that I don't need a company telling me it's a problem. 
Apple wired earbuds using up the same port as your charger on new iPhones. Then you have to make a choice, buying the wireless charging pad or wireless earbuds. I recently upgraded from a 6S to an XR and I'm still a little salty about it. What drives me insane is that wired Apple earbuds are so cheaply made but are sold for $30. On 5 different occasions the wires in my earbuds have separated on the inside. Take money from childcare support, education, and mental health care. Give it to police forces. Police now address the kids causing trouble and not in school, after school programs, or getting mental health care. Kids go to prison. Take money from education, child care, and mental health care. Give it to prisons. Rinse and repeat. I've seen halitosis, and a variety of female problems mentioned. So how about ptosis? A medical sounding name for sagging. It has other usages. But I'm talking about boobs. Nothing against plastic surgery for people who want it. But this term seems to exist just to make something normal sound like a condition that needs to be cured. Gravity always wins. Jusaru. Sold you a Wi-Fi juice machine. That could only operate via Wi-Fi with the phone app. That basically squeezed the juice out of pre-mashed fruit bags. So you couldn't just throw in a watermelon. You could only get the juice bags by subscription from the same company and the machine would only accept those and only those. And reject them as well if they were expired even for a minute. Not to mention that you could just squeeze the bags by hand. All to give you the best juice experience. TLDR. Subscription based juice. Bagged vacuum cleaners have inferior power and lose suction before they are full, and are messy to deal with when they are full. That was the major selling point of Dyson's original bagless vacuum cleaner, and it's pretty much all crap. Bagged vacuum cleaners typically have less between the motor and the hose, no more than a couple of filters usually, edit, and they're normally downwind, as it were, of the bag, so the bag catches most of the crap, meaning they don't need attention in as long, as long as it's a decent cleaner. They're very powerful, losing suction, yet a little, when they're getting to be completely full, but not really before. I've noticed it far earlier and far more steadily with every bagless vacuum I've used. Not to mention bagless cleaners have filter upon filter that needs to be kept clean to maintain the suction, often recommending you do it every few uses, and have to wash and dry out the filter as well, which often takes a day or so. A messy heck no, take the lid off, lift out the bag. Throw it in the bin. With the bagless you've got some container you have to tip out. If it's slightly windy and you tip it into the bin, you get dust everywhere. Sometimes stuff snags in there and you've got no option but to reach in and fiddle it out. It's a ton messier than just discard the bag. Replace. So bagless cleaners. More powerful. Nope. Loses suction. Shortos. Cleaner to empty. Definitely not. Big fat steaming pile of marketing. Light bulbs only lasting 1000 hours. The light bulb was invented in 1879. There are one or two original design light bulbs still burning to this day. Body hair on women being considered ugly. In the early 20th century I think the 20s or 30s. Companies began promoting women with shaved pits legs as more feminine to sell more razors. And while it's not a problem exactly, color coding boys as blue and girls as pink is from a marketing strategy in the 50s. In previous centuries blue was considered feminine because of its association with the Virgin Mary, whereas red was associated with sex, and thus less appropriate for women. All of this applies to just western culture btw. Obviously other cultures have different style grooming traditions. Inventing problems is the very foundation of the cosmetic surgery industry. For example, having breasts that do not look like overinflated tires about to burst is a problem. Having a normal looking butt is a problem. Plastic surgeons prey on the insecure and weak minded all the time and encourage them to see their bodies as flawed and in need of surgical correction. This one's more of an exaggeration than invented. I once saw an advertisement where a guy literally threw a glass of wine onto his own shirt. Then they go on to explain that you should buy their product to prevent this everyday occurrence. Herpes. In the past, it wasn't that big a deal. Tons of people had it, but for most people it would flare up maybe once and then most of the symptoms would go away. For centuries, herpes wasn't something that people got too troubled about. Then in the 1970s Overax Acyclovir was released, 
but most people didn't care enough about herpes to go buy a drug to treat it. So the company's marketing department launched a disease awareness campaign, emphasizing the importance of treating genital herpes. They started using terminology like incurable and created the idea that herpes was a burdensome disease and everyone has to go to doctors to get it treated. They had teaching sessions for doctors and created support groups and used terminology like disease victims and sufferers. Herpes went from being so inconsequential that it wasn't even included in a study of attitudes towards STDs in the 1970s to being called the new sexual leprosy in Time magazine in 1980. There wasn't enough stigma against herpes, so they manufactured some to sell more drugs. Growing up I remember that short time that herpes had the top spotlight as the new sexual leprosy. Then Hivade smacked herpes down. 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 Tampon applicators were invented by a man who thought that women touching their own genitals was akin to losing one's virginity. The addition of packaging material for what is essentially compacted wad of cotton multiplies nearly existentially fuel, transportation, and supply costs for the same number of products without applicators, hurting the consumer and the environment at the same time. He invented the cardboard applicator for tampons so that women wouldn't have to touch their sinful sinful vaginas. Since cardboard applicators are super uncomfortable for a lot of women, plastic applicators were introduced, and now they're contributing to a constant source of non-biodegradable non-recyclable plastic waste. Tampons can come without applicators, and I actually think it's more comfortable that way. Peeps should check out OB. A I've never managed to use a tampon with no applicator successfully, I can't really get the angle right, and if I do I'm in a bearing down position so it doesn't go in right. I use the cardboard one so it's marginally better than plastic I guess. Small pockets on women's jeans. It creates a need for purses handbags. I'm pretty sure handbags predate the small no pocket jeans. Early women's jeans, even 2000s jeans, are normal functional pockets. The pockets on modern jeans are small because it is easier to make a tighter fit this way and the makers assume that the purse will be used to carry valuables. Clover was removed from lawn seed mixes, and the world was brainwashed to think it's a weed. Clover pulls nitrogen out of the air for free and puts it in the soil. Grasses grow mainly on nitrogen, and they deplete the nitrogen in soils when there is no nitrogen fixing plant as part of the ecosystem. So now your lawn starts dying and they can sell you high nitrogen fertilizer. Get some clover back into your lawns. I always felt bad that my lawn was 90% clover, not pretty grass. Now I don't feel bad. Printers telling you they're out of ink way I before they are actually out. Printer ink is a whole can of worms in part created by consumers and by the industry through its response to an issue. In the early days of the inkjet printer, the print heads themselves were a part of the printer. Ink cartridges were merely tanks of said ink in a convenient package to insert, and were fairly readily refilled with bulk ink, if you didn't mind a little potential mess. Those early printers also lacked ink level monitoring of any kind, or any way of detecting if the print heads were getting too hot or gelling up. As a result, People would run their ink until nothing would show on the paper, which led to the tiny vibrating heads overheating, ink cools the electromechanical heads, and burning up, so that a fresh supply of ink wouldn't make the printer work again. Many printers were warrantied after just the first set of cartridges were run through them. This became very costly. The fastest fix was to put the heads themselves in the cartridge, so you'd replace them with a the fresh tank of ink and avoid a warranty issue. This raised the cost of the cartridges, as essentially one stroke three of the cost of the printing hardware was in those heads. They also phased in monitoring of ink levels and the heat level of the heads, because you could still ruin a cartridge printing too much too fast, and that meant warranty issues for cartridges. As OEMs were remanufacturing their own cartridges, it also preserved the cause for them. The monitoring should have removed the need to have the heads in the cartridge, and some printers did in fact go back to ink tanks, but most did not, as the ink cartridges now represented a big profit center. If you don't believe this, check out Epson Eco Tank printers. They use refill bottles, not cartridges, and cost a premium over their line of those printers that do use cartridges. Better believe they don't want to lose money on a truly fixed and functional technology. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, 
Check another video. Bye for now.